Hey guys, welcome to the Sim Racing Paddock Podcast, Episode 5. I don't have a clever Star Wars pun, but yeah, it's Episode 5. I'm excited for this. This is my first episode of the podcast in my new studio, which is basically my living room with a backdrop. So in this episode, we are going to be focusing on the next generation of racing video games on the console and on the PC, and why I think we have a lot to be excited about, despite not having much information quite yet. 2020 has been a weird year. We have had a lot of craziness, but at the very end of the year, we are going to be sort of rewarded with this next generation of video games. And I think it's going to benefit sim racers, even if you don't purchase these hardware. And that is because we are going to be seeing the trickle-down effect, but I'm going to be getting on that in a later point in this video. So first off, I'm going to be talking about the next generation of consoles, and that is going to be the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X S. So these are two very exciting consoles that, honestly, I'm pretty thrilled about. So when we did have the pre-order blitz of a couple weeks ago, I did actually land a pre-order on a PlayStation 5, so I will be covering that as I get it. But with the Xbox Series X being the most powerful console ever, that is something I'm not as thrilled by because I actually have a solid gaming PC. Most of the games I'm going to be wanting to play are going to be on the PC, especially with Game Pass being as awesome as it is. But we are going to be now seeing this sort of high caliber PC gaming experience in some effects to on a console, which is pretty darn cool. So in the past, I have had a couple videos talking about why I'm not a huge fan of console gaming, but lately, honestly, I've been starting to change my tone on it a bit. So in previous generations, we've always gotten the sort of redheaded stepchild in terms of hardware when compared to PC versions. So take last generation, for example. We had the AMD bulldozer architecture in the PC side, which was quite powerful, but at the same time, it was a major resource and power hog. I can't really explain too much into in detail. There are other tech YouTube channels that can do a better job of explaining that. AMD also had the partnership with the consoles, and they released in the same time as the AMD Bulldozer architecture, and they utilized the AMD Jaguar architecture, which is more optimized for mobile devices, but it is actually surprisingly powerful. I believe they are eight core CPUs, but they utilized a low power consumption, low clock speed. So the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4 released to have clock speeds on the CPU of sub two gigahertz. And this is when we were starting to really push through that four gigahertz barrier and almost were starting to creep towards a five for the extreme overclockers. So with that being said, what did that mean for the console gamer in the 2013 to 2020 generation? Well, basically, it meant you couldn't do much. Well, not really that way, but you couldn't really do the large, expansive worlds that many people were hoping in the generation. So we were seeing this sort of element where we had these beautiful titles. Look at the Order 1886. Look at Gran Turismo Sport. Look at Forza Motorsport 7. Those were some visually stunning titles. But at the same time, some of them really got bogged down when there was a lot of action on screen. You saw major frame rate drops, and these likely weren't drops that were GPU bound. In my opinion, they were CPU bound. So it's an interesting element that I am so freaking glad that they are addressing in this next generation. So for this console generation, we are going to be getting a Ryzen-based architecture chip, which is similar to what we are currently rocking in AMD computers. And then we also pair that up with pretty modern AMD graphics. We're going to be getting a decent PC-esque experience, and we're seeing that high refresh rates, ultra-wide support. Basically, the only thing that we're not getting in terms of display is... Uh, native VR with Oculus or HTC, 
as well as the lack of triple screen support, which is a bit of a negative for sim racing, but hey, we're getting ultra wide, so that's pretty cool. So it seems like consoles are getting a little closer to the PC side in terms of performance and the sort of gameplay experience that we're looking for. And it's going to be intriguing to see how that works for the titles. So in addition to the Xbox Series X and the PlayStation 5, we are getting their flagship counterparts as well. Sony is giving us a new Gran Turismo title in the form of Gran Turismo 7, which I am personally really excited for. In my previous podcast episode, when I talked about my love-hate relationship with Gran Turismo, I said, hey, they have the chance to reel me back in. And it seems like with GT7, that is exactly what they're trying to do. They are creating that sort of Pokemon on wheels experience that we got in Gran Turismo 4, and to a lesser extent in 5 and 6. But we are getting that. I haven't heard anything about premium or standard cards. I'm really hoping they're rid of that for once and for all. With GT Sport having all premium cars, I am optimistic. But who knows? Polyphony Digital is Polyphony Digital. I'm just saying. So, that is for the PlayStation side. But what is coming for the Xbox? Forza Motorsport. No number. So, is this sort of like a reboot, a reimagining, maybe similar to what Halo Infinite is doing for Halo? I don't know, but that game looks stunning. And also, it coming out on the PC, I am really excited for that because apparently it's not coming out for Xbox One. So, we are getting two flagship series. We're also getting other titles like Codemasters Dirt 5. And most likely, they'll port Project Cars 3 and Grid to the PlayStation 5, even though, in essence, they're essentially the same title, in my opinion. But yeah, Dirt 5. I am intrigued by it, but with Codemasters, you never know. You get a Dirt Rally, then you get a Dirt 4. You get a Dirt Rally 2, then you get a Grid. And it's like, Codemasters... You just make some of the most incredible racing games ever. Now you're basically becoming the EA of racing games, and it freaking sucks. So hopefully this next generation, we might see something a little better from EA. I mean, Codemasters, sorry. I'll try not to make that slip again. And then I believe Assetto Corsa Competition. In my review of ACC on the PlayStation 4, I was pretty brutal on it, I'll be honest. But it is something where... Kind of to give them the benefit of the doubt, I think it is something where it can be saved. Assetto Corsa Competition on the PC had an incredibly rough launch. And it misdelivered on some of the promises, like ray tracing. I think it's still not in yet. But keyword is yet. Kuno Simulazioni is doing an incredible job of updating their titles. Assetto Corsa Competition at launch in my opinion, was a mess. Unreal Engine was very unrefined, but through update after update after update, it's quickly climbed the ladder to become one of my favorite sim racing titles. I think something similar could happen with ACC on the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X because of the architecture, because of the bones underneath. The Console releases of Assetto Corsa Competition were really hamstrung by the limited hardware and even though Unreal Engine is a relatively streamlined engine, at the same time, it is something where you do need the horsepower to power what you are trying to get out of it. And unfortunately, it seemed like what ACC was trying to get out of consoles was simply too much. So what I am really hoping is with the modern hardware that the Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5 produce, that means that we will see better performance, better stability with higher car fields. So that's what I'm hoping to see out of ACC. And I think that is quite possible on this next generation, thanks to the increased power. This increased power could brute force through some of the poor optimizations that ACC admittedly has. So, those are what I think about what is currently announced for the consoles, and sort of why I think the consoles are going to be great. And then, at the same time, we have the PC. We have the new graphics cards, 
the RTX 30 series, big Navi, we are going to see some great computing performance. But the thing is, PC racing is generally hamstrung by what is being developed for the consoles at the time. Development for video games, especially multi-platform games, tend to be developed for the lowest common denominator, save for a few exceptions like Call of Duty on the Wii, which was developed for a different studio. But when you saw games that were developed for previous gen and then next gen, you did see some disparities, but at the same time, a lot of similarities. So, with this being said, what is going to happen to PC sim racing? And I think it's going to be really, really interesting. And I think one of the big elements is going to be Unreal Engine 5. Unreal Engine 5 is an engine that is very ambitious, very powerful, absolutely stunning. But at the same time, we've only seen one or two applications of it so far. So the question is, what is going to happen when we swap over some racing games from development on Unreal Engine 3 and Unreal Engine 4 to Unreal Engine 5. I think that's going to be pretty cool. We're going to see that, especially on the visual side, some on the physics side. But in essence, Unreal Engine is an open source engine. We are going to see a lot of people making a lot of projects, making a lot of innovations with this engine. And... Honestly, I'm a lot more excited for Unreal Engine 5 than I ever was for Unreal Engine 4. It's going to be weird seeing how it applies to racing video games. At first, I was really, really apprehensive about the idea of Unreal Engine being used for racing games. We saw the rough release of Assetto Corsa Competition. We saw Craft coming out, and that was pretty good, but still needed a lot of optimization. We saw Gravel, which I was sent, but it was a total train wreck. I never actually did videos on it. Maybe I'll do one later on. But we saw these rough Unreal Engine releases, which led me to have sort of a negative view on Unreal Engine. So with Unreal Engine 5, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. Will we see a revolution in racing games out of that? Specifically, no. But with the added processing power of the next-gen consoles, the Unreal Engine could be used as a wrapper, and then everything around it could be developed by the coders to a higher fidelity on consoles and computer, most likely, thanks to what we've been getting in recent years. So basically, that is a long-winded way of saying that console gaming is going to get better, and PC gaming should get better as well, and that same principle should apply to sim racing. So what would I like to see out of this next generation specifically for sim racing? Well, first off, I would love to see 32 car fields. 16 is great, but when you got to that number in the previous generation, it did feel like you got a little hamstrung on the CPU side. You saw major frame drops, especially in bad weather. I believe in this next generation, we will be able to get solid 60 frames per second or higher and we would be able to get that with larger car fields, with weather conditions and day to night transition, which those would be my second point. With Gran Turismo Sport and other sim racing titles, we didn't get the day to night transition, we didn't get the weather, we got some weather, we didn't get dynamic weather. I think with the added processing power of the CPU and GPU, we should be able to get both, but time will tell. The third thing I'd love to see is support for endurance racing and driver swaps. This is something that's been really exciting happening on the PC side. We have seen endurance races in R Factor, Assetto Corsa, Assetto Corsa Competition, and etc. So we have been seeing all of that. Where's that on the console side? Assetto Corsa Competition, I don't recall if it has direct driver swaps on the consoles, but it does a great job of it on the PC. We see iRacing with driver swaps, 24-hour races, day-to-night transition. That is pretty awesome. We are also seeing R-Factor 2, which I don't think will ever land on a console. I, I will eat a shoe or something if that ever happens. But I am seeing this happening on the console side in the near future. I think we have the power. We have the internet now. Think about 10 years ago. Think about 15 years ago. The internet we had likely would have never supported true multi-stint around the world. 
Now we have it around the world and it works great. So let's bring it over to consoles. That would be awesome. Last and definitely not least, I alluded to earlier, more expanded display modes with field of view, with all the goodies that we like. Let's get ultra wide 120 hertz. Let's get triple screens maybe someday with an adapter. Let's get VR. Let's please the no VR, no buy guys. Well, I mean, I've heard enough of them. Let's just appease them. Let's get them the experience they want because VR, to be frank, is freaking awesome. Let's try to wrap up these thoughts in a cohesive way, shall we? This next generation is going to be interesting. We've already seen the demand for the PlayStation 5, Xbox, and the graphics cards. So we know that people are looking to game and also they're looking to race. They're looking to race. They're looking to bust out their steering wheels, their pedal sets, plug it into their next-gen hardware, and get a next-generation racing experience. Will we get that out of the game? I'm not sure. We haven't had a release date for Forza or Gran Turismo yet. I don't recall if there's one for Dirt 5. It's just been so forgettable to me that I just haven't really been paying attention to it. But ultimately, we are getting some solid racing experiences teased for us. Will they deliver? We'll find out. But I am hoping that when I publish my review of the PlayStation 5, that we'll at least have some good racing games. And at the very least, I have a solid racing wheel to test it out with. And that is actually going to take me to one last point that I am really excited about for this next console generation. And that is the wheels and pedals. So with the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, the hardware of the previous generation didn't really carry over as well. We had some carryover. We had, I believe, the Thrustmaster T500 RS, but ultimately Fnatic kind of went dry on the console compatibility. Logitech released their new wheels for the premium, cut out the shifter, etc. That didn't sit well with me. But apparently, this next generation they are going to be supporting as much hardware as possible. They're going to be supporting the Fnatic wheels, Thrustmaster wheels, Logitech wheels, even the crap wheels that I don't really remember the names of. So, they are saying that they will at least be recognized by the PlayStation ecosystem and the Xbox Series X. But, at the same time, it is going to be dependent on the developers. They need to program support in for the wheels just like it is for the PC to some extent. The PC, they tend to work on the HID drivers, I believe, and those work pretty well. They have the sort of fallback if it's not officially supported, you can program it in. But with consoles, everything tends to be simplified. Everything tends to be simplified on the consoles and that works well but at the same time, you can't really plug in your open sim wheel or your sim cube or an old wheel into your hardware, which is kind of disappointing, but at the same time, kind of understandable. So to see the existing wheels currently released already compatible with the consoles, that's great to see. But that brings up the question, what the heck are they going to bring out to sort of pitch that the next generation sim racing experience is better. Thrustmaster has been stuck with their modular ecosystem for a decade now. So are they going to double down, triple down on this for the next generation? I'm not sure, but ultimately it's going to be intriguing to see. But hey, we have a direct drive wheel that will work on the PlayStation and Xbox. That's pretty awesome. So yeah, guys, on that note, I am going to wrap up this episode of the SRP Podcast. Thank you for listening or watching. By the way, guys, I've gotten a lot of messages from people saying that they discovered the podcast and then discovered I had the YouTube channel. So I'm just going to throw in a bit of a shameless plug. If you go to Sim Racing Paddock on YouTube, same spelling as it is on your podcast channel of choice, you can find the YouTube channel. We are almost at 34,000 subscribers, and that I am super freaking stoked on. Thanks for listening to this episode of the podcast and me ranting about next generation hardware. If you liked it, hit that follow or subscribe button, whichever is your choice. And yeah, well, that's it, guys. And thanks for watching slash listening.